The story world of any narrative should be more than simply a backdrop for the events of the plot. It should connect to and amplify the protagonist's journey. As John Truby writes in his book on screenwriting, The Anatomy of Story, creating a unique world for the story and organically connecting it to the characters is as essential to great storytelling as character, plot, theme, and dialogue. When John Gonzalez, the narrative director for Horizon Zero Dawn, came on board the project, the basic story world already existed. It's a thousand years in the future. The world is rewilded. It's lush, it's vibrant, it's beautiful. Humans don't understand technology and live in tribes. And then there are all of these magnificent, terrifying machines uh, that make up the wildlife of this world. Other than that, it was just a huge possibility space to explore, looking for the best possible story. John's challenge then was to explain the mystery of how the story world came to be in a way that would have emotional meaning for the player. I thought that it was especially important to make the story world, to make the past, to make the mystery as personal as possible. Because otherwise, I thought we were risking that the player would reveal this huge mystery, but it would just be an entirely cerebral satisfaction of curiosity. I think that the most powerful mysteries are ones where the detective really has skin in the game. So how do you design a protagonist who has skin in the game? And in the case of Horizon Zero Dawn, one who has a deep personal connection with a story world that is essentially robot dinosaurs. To answer this question, we're going to look at the narrative advantages of an authored versus non-authored player character, the benefits of designing a motivated protagonist who will relentlessly pursue their desire, and how the player's investment in the game is maximized by making Aloy's personal journey and the mystery of the story world one and the same. Welcome to Story Mode. Horizon Zero Dawn. When it comes to protagonists in video games, there exists a spectrum. On one end, there are games like Fallout or Skyrim, where you design a character from scratch and are given few details about your backstory. On the other end are games like The Last of Us, where the player character is authored. Joel has a specific backstory and a character arc which you can't affect. So when designing the protagonist for Horizon Zero Dawn, one of the first big decisions was which approach to take, because as John describes, these approaches have different psychological effects on the player. So in a game like Fallout or Skyrim, where you get to design your character from scratch, and the majority of people are going to experience that character from a first person perspective, it really is like you're stepping into a player shaped hole. And here I would say that your, your emotional connection is really one of identification. In these games, there's less room for empathy toward the player character because you are the character. But in games with an authored protagonist, a distance is created between the player and the player character. And this distance allows for a different kind of connection. When you're fighting a bunch of robot dinosaurs as Aloy, I think there is a strong sense of identification in those moments. But in the cinematics, um, in even the conversations, that relationship, that connection becomes slightly more distant. And that distance is really essential because it opens up empathy. At that moment, you no longer feel as though you are that person, or at least that was the intention. Instead, you feel like you have a relationship to that person. It's really that bond that you have there that plays a more significant role of driving your, your play. So by making Aloy an authored protagonist, the writers could give her a compelling and empathetic character arc. One of the advantages of this in an open world game is that it incentivizes players to continue the main quest. And so I think that if you can dial up the power of that main quest, if you can make it as, as interesting and as emotionally engrossing as possible, you're more likely to be like, oh, yeah, I want to get back to that because it actually matters. So how then do you create a compelling and empathetic character arc? In the case of Aloy, much of her arc's power comes from her determination to pursue a desire. In their book on playwriting, Frank Hauser and Russell Reich succinctly describe the importance of giving characters a strong desire, writing, the strength of the character's wants equals the strength of the play. 
In order to demonstrate the strength of Aloy's wants, the development team made some risky choices. It was because we wanted to connect the player really deeply to this character that we decided to begin with you playing her as a, a little girl. And this was something that I think scared the hell out of us. We're actually gonna have you start off with, with really very little in the way of combat. It ended up being the best decision that we could have made, I think, for the story. Uh, because it does introduce you to this uh, need that she has in a really powerful way. Aloy grows up as an outcast of the Nora, a matriarchal tribe for whom one's lineal connection to their mother is very important in determining status. And for reasons unknown to her, Aloy is motherless. They are outcasts both, and she is motherless. By dedicating the first section of the game to young Aloy, the player gets to experience how unfairly she is treated and how this incites her desire. So for her, that's she wants to know who her mother was. She wants to know um, her origin. She wants to know why she became an outcast. Rost, the man raising her, explains that there might be a way to get answers from the matriarchs, but... It would take years of training. I don't care. What she learns is that if she competes in a kind of rite of passage for this tribe called the Proving, um, that she gets to request a boon from the elders of this tribe. Whatever the winner wants. So Aloy decides to train for years and years until finally she's ready for the Proving. And one of the things that's great about this, and I think, you know, Cinematics did an amazing job with this sort of training montage that we had. You, what you realize is you realize, yeah, she really is determined. I mean, she's not gonna stop for anything, which I think is uh, fantastic for really hooking you into, into her emotion. You sense how powerful this motivation is for her. By the time the player as Aloy is competing in the proving, I've trained my whole life for this. The stakes are high. Not enough, must be perfect. After overcoming a number of obstacles, Aloy manages to win the proving finally obtaining the thing she's worked so hard for. And just like in any dynamic story, this is the moment when everything goes wrong. Ah! <sighs> this is the inciting incident of the story. The red hair dies now! The point of no return that will send Aloy off on her true journey. Survive. And now that the player is invested in her, the game begins to reveal that Aloy's personal journey and the story world are interconnected. As John says, The mystery of this world is the mystery of who Aloy is. Anyone who has played Horizon Zero Dawn can attest to the grandeur of the story world and the awe-inspiring machines that populate it. Much of the game is spent sneaking past, fighting, or overriding these machines. The gameplay is fun enough that the team might have gotten away with simply not explaining the origin of the machines, or having it only be incidentally related to the protagonist's personal journey. But instead, and spoiler warning, we're about to get into some story details, Horizon Zero Dawn is extraordinary in that the protagonist's personal journey is directly related to the origin story of the machines. And not only that, the entire story world, from the human settlements you visit to the ruins of our fallen civilization, ties back to Aloy. This information is slowly revealed at key turning points in Aloy's character arc. After the attack on the Proving, Aloy learns she was targeted because she looks like a mysterious, unknown woman. Where is this from? And when? Are you my mother? As Aloy explores more of the world, she finds hints that there is some connection between the mystery of the story world and the woman she seeks to learn more about. But it's not until the midpoint of the story that the extent of the connection is revealed, during a quest called Maker's End. So as you're approaching what might be the midpoint or so of the main quest, Aloy knows that she has some kind of connection to this mysterious woman, but she's told by one of the people she interrogates that there was data about this woman at this place called Maker's End. That's the, the tribal name for it. In reality, Maker's End is the ruined headquarters of the 21st century robotics and technology corporation, Barrow Automated Solutions. When Aloy tries to enter, the system scans her genes. Hold for identity scan. 
and then welcomes her as Dr. Elizabeth Sobeck. Genetic profile confirmed. Entry authorized. Greetings, Dr. Sobeck. Please step inside. And this begins then her exploration of this, this building. And she's finding out a lot of data, that a lot of information through data logs that are evocative and certainly give a sense of what this corporation was and that something went very wrong. The ACA-3 scarab combines conventional and information warfare capabilities in one package. In Horizon Zero Dawn, story information is often presented in the form of data points, records from what is, for Aloy, a thousand years in the past, and for us, is the near future. There are three kinds of data points, text, audio, and hologram. Text logs, these were optional. Some of them were there for nerds like me who would want to uh, get as much information as possible. One example of a text data point found in Maker's End is a recovered email sent from the VP of Public Relations for the Faro Automated Solutions Corporation. It explains that a fisherman captured a video of one of their combat robots harvesting a pod of endangered dolphins for fuel. This text elucidates how these robots first became a threat to humanity, while also being darkly humorous. If it's an audio recording, it's not as important as the holograms and it's optional, but it's still important. In, in this case, I think of these as being the opportunities to really do emotional storytelling. Audio data points allow for performance, immersing the player in the emotion of the moment. In Maker's End, the audio data points reveal that the head of this corporation, Ted Farrow, has lost control of the company's combat machines, and they demonstrate how dire the situation is. You don't code something you can't crack. All we need is a backdoor. You specifically forbade us from leaving anything resembling a backdoor in code. I need a way to reassert control over the hearts of Timor Sworn. I don't know what to tell you, Ted. You're asking the impossible. Finally, there are hologram data points. If it's a hologram, it's really important. I mean, that, basically that's story critical stuff. When Aloy reaches the top of the building, she finds three hologram data points in which critical details of what happened to the old world are finally revealed. It's a cool informational payoff, but it also has an emotional punch because it is directly tied to Aloy's search for her mother. Elizabeth, good to, uh, it's been years. You screwed something up, something big, or you wouldn't have eaten the crow necessary to get me here. So spit it out. The scenes confirm that the mystery woman, Elizabeth Sobeck, is someone who lived long ago, and that she had a role in the events surrounding the collapse of our civilization. It's not bad, Ted. It's apocalyptic. You built a line of killer robots. Peacekeepers that consume biomass as fuel in emergencies and you made them capable of self-replication so you start extrapolating what's going to happen if that goes unchecked and it's not good we're not talking the fall of civilization we're talking extinction it's finally clear that aloy's personal journey is directly connected to the mystery of the story world as silence her enigmatic guide soon explains you've chased a personal riddle into a crowd of larger mysteries. The common thread is your connection to Elizabeth Subic. But the game isn't over. Again, this is just the midpoint. Project Zero Dawn. Jesus, Liz. When I asked you to find a cure, I didn't expect it to be worse than the disease. It's not, Ted. It may be grim, but it's our only chance. I think that there are people who are playing the game where when they got to that, they thought they were close to the end of the game. But actually, there's still a lot more. I thought that was great. I thought it was great that we kept on being able to string you along to the next big reveal. What was Project Zero Dawn? Exactly the question. Now, are you ready to go get the answer? Horizon Zero Dawn demonstrates how an authored protagonist can create an opportunity for players to empathize with the player character. It shows that giving the protagonist a strong motivation to pursue a burning desire can help us invest in them. And it stands as a great example of how fusing that character's personal journey with the story world can create a powerful and unique gaming experience. 
Hey guys, Michael here. I hope you enjoyed our episode on Horizon Zero Dawn. If you want to help us make more videos celebrating game developers and the work that they're doing, you can support this channel on Patreon. When you pledge, you can get access to our Story Mode Discord server, the full-length interview with John Gonzalez, and your name in the credits of each video. I want to say thank you to John for chatting with us, and thank you to our patrons for making this channel possible. If you want more episodes of Story Mode, you can help us grow by subscribing to the channel and liking and sharing this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.